Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. Each institution will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. And lastly, all sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. We are currently in session C3, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our very first representative from College of Staten Island. Hey everybody, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Hi, so my name is Jesse Rodriguez. I'm from the College of Staten Island, the Office of Recruitment and Admissions. I'm the new student programs coordinator over there. Um, and uh, so we are part of the, uh, so uh, we're located on Staten Island. Um, we are a part of the CUNY system. Uh, so we are one of the senior CUNY colleges. Um, but we, what makes us a little bit more, a little bit more unique um, compared to some of the other CUNYs um, is that we do offer associate degrees. So we do have a comprehensive program available as well uh, for students that, uh, you know, maybe want to start at the associate level and then be able to um, have the opportunity to ascend that we always like to refer to into the bachelor's degrees and above. Um, and one of the benefits is that you could do everything from your associates all the way through your doctoral with us, depending on the program. Um, so we are a full 200 for acre campus. We are the largest continuous campus in New York City. Um, so it's something that we do like to uh, bring up and boast about a little bit because it is a stunning campus. Um, so you're looking at an aerial shot of the campus itself. Um, if you do have the opportunity and you are interested in coming to CSI um, or even uh, thinking about it, you definitely take one of our tours. We do tours every Wednesday at three o'clock. We also do select weekends every month as well. Um, so uh, another unique feature of our campus, we offer um, some student housing as well. Um, so most of our students are commuter students. So we have just, uh, just over 11,000 students on campus. About 465 of them actually live on campus. Um, and one of the things we don't, we don't really like to call um, Dolphin Cove dorms um, because it, it really isn't. Um, they are a luxury apartment style living. I always like to make the joke um, and have for since they've opened that these, uh, they look a lot nicer than my friend's apartments. That is still true to this day. Um, they are stunning to see uh, and they are included in our tour if you are interested. Um, so you would be able to uh, live in your own apartment um, with at most three other people. Um, there are some rooms available that are only two um, people in the room as well. It kind of depends on your preference. So going into um, our affordability, um, we are, so those of you here are likely going to be New York residents, you're going to look at the residency rate. So it's just under 7,000 for the year and just over, um, just over 3,000 for the semester. Now keep in mind, this is before any financial aid does kick in. So you, you want to make sure that you're applying for your FAFSA and you're applying for your TAP. Your FAFSA is your state, is your federal aid and your TAP is your state aid. Most of our students do qualify for some financial aid, um, if not all. So definitely uh, take the opportunity to do that. Um, so make your education as affordable as possible. Um, so we have five different academic divisions at the College of Staten Island. Um, this one is nearest and dearest to my heart. And I say this because I am actually an alum of the college as well. I graduated a few years ago, um, but I say again, this is near and dear to my heart because I was a graduate of the history and political science department. Um, so, each of these, there are some other interdisciplinary majors that do fall under some of these departments. Um, and it really is kind of just uh, the opportunity to work within these areas, work with more specifically in some of the um, concentrations in, in each area. 
have the Division of Science and Technology. This is our typical STEM field. Um, the majors that you do see, there are some concentrations within them as well. Um, and our uh, uh, we have pre-professional tracks at CSI, um, and one of them is uh, pre-medical track. This actually falls in our Division of Science and Technology within bio. Um, and I say that, um, which you'll find out in a few minutes. So we also have the Lucille and J. Chasnoff School of Business. So you're looking at one of our newest additions to campus. Um, so this building uh, was is being renovated right now um, and will be open to students soon. Um, it'll have classroom space, lab space. Um, our, our, our school business students also have the opportunity to take class in the Con Edison trading room. The Con Edison, it's a, uh, a stock trading floor. Um, so it's really the opportunity to get that hands-on learning um, and learn what it is to be on a stock on a stock trading floor before you ever step foot in an internship um, or maybe even get a job and you kind of have an idea of what you to expect. We also have the School of Health Sciences. Um, so the reason why I, I brought up before that our uh, pre-professional track of pre-med falls within Division Side Technology is because we do have the School of Health Science. Um, and each department within it is a little bit more unique than the last. Our physical therapy department, keep in mind, is a doctoral program. So it's a graduate level program. Um, so if you are interested in physical therapy, you will have to choose a different major in your undergrad. And then during your last year, you will apply for entry into the program. Um, and our nursing and our social work students uh, would be coming in as pre-nursing or pre-psych, um, pre Social pre-social work, and uh, you would then, after your first semester, apply for uh, entry into those programs as well. And finally, we have the School of Education. Um, you could do everything from your bachelor's to your master's with us, um, and we have uh, we'll help you and work with you um, in every level of uh, certification and helping you get that certification. So we have early childhood, childhood, and secondary ed. If you aren't teaching, interested in teaching high school, you would major in your subject of choice, um, and then you would do education towards the end. We do offer three different honors programs at the College of Staten Island, um, Macaulay, Verrazano, and Teja, as well as two opportunity programs, which is SEEK and ASAP. Um, ASAP and Verrazano are programs that do actually work together as well. So if you're interested in either of them, please let me know. We are a division two athletic school. Um, so if uh, you are an athlete and you're interested in playing uh, for a sport and maybe getting a scholarship for that, or if you're just interested in being at a school that does have really great um, athletics, definitely come by. And just some of our social media. So um, thank you. And uh, I'll include my email in the chat so that you all have it as well. Thank you. The next representative is from Stevens Institute of Technology. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening to learn a little bit more about our schools. We really appreciate it. I'm Megan Highland. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Stevens Institute of Technology. Stevens was founded in 1870 by the Stevens family. Um, the Stevens family were a family of inventors. They were really moving our country forward at the time, incredibly innovative, and that's still very much a part of who we are today. We're, we're a smaller school of about students, average class size of 25 with a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We have primarily programs within the fields of STEM. We offer just over 30 different majors from which students can choose and all of them are listed here. The primary groupings being engineering, computer science, business, sciences, humanities, and the arts. What's important to note as a potential applicant to Stevens is that we do ask you to indicate your first and second choice program on your application. So you do have to do a bit of a self-assessment, figure out what it is that you do or do not like to do at this point um, and, and start in a particular area of study. That doesn't mean it's set in stone. You do still have two years to officially declare your major at Stevens, but we do start you in one program so you can figure out kind of quickly, yes, I like this, let's continue on this path, or no, this doesn't feel like a good fit, let me try another major. You can also come in undecided under more of those broader categories. So something like business undecided, engineering undecided, scientists undecided, for example. Once you get to the school, the university is also much more open to you than just that one major. Um, there's possibilities to double major. We have major and minor options. We also do have accelerated bachelor's, master's degree programs at the school. So you could complete both those degrees in uh, five years as opposed to the typical six. So if you are thinking about looking, um, applying to Stevens, we would definitely be a school that you want to get a little more information on each of the majors to again figure out where it is that you'd like to start um, within our particular school and then if admitted you're admitted to begin in that particular program 
Our location um, in Hoboken is one of the factors that I think really draws a lot of students to, to our school. We kind of have the best of both worlds in the sense that Hoboken is a city, but it's a smaller city. It's just about a mile by a mile. So it has much more of a neighborhood feel to it. But at the same time, we have that proximity to New York City, which of course all of you are very familiar with and all of these social, professional, cultural, personal opportunities that come along with that. Also, we have a traditional campus. Sometimes city schools don't have a campus where you kind of know that sense of place. And at Stevens, we certainly do. You come up through gates with the residence halls, academic buildings, library. Um, so you have that, that campus feel with a city like Hoboken and with that access to New York City. So you're kind of seamlessly moving between these three spaces. At Stevens, you're not required to live on campus any year. You can be a commuter student all the way throughout, and we are certainly a distance in which you can do that. But housing is also provided all four years for you if you, if you want it. Two years, you're living on campus in our residence halls, and then in your junior and senior year, if you want to continue to receive housing from the institution, Stevens leases apartments in the city of Hoboken on your behalf. So you're still considered a resident of the school, but we've gotten you an apartment. Our sophomore class this fall is going to move into our brand new residential towers in our new university center complex, which the first three floors are just more student life space for everyone, more student lounges, another dining center, another fitness facility. So we're really excited to get that open for our students this late spring and then for this fall. One of the things also that I think really helps uh, or makes Stevens stand out um, from some schools you might be looking at is the opportunities for professional practice. We don't require students to have a professional opportunity in order to graduate. However, over 90% of them will. We have an internship program at Stevens, which is not major specific. Anyone can pursue an internship. We have a cooperative education program at Stevens that is major specific. So just for our engineering and computer science students, this takes your time at Stevens to five years because you alternate semesters of going to school full-time versus working full-time. Also lots of research opportunities for our students as well to start right as, uh, as undergraduates as early as our freshman year if they'd like. We have a 97% placement rate, so 97% of our students were either employed or enrolled in graduate school full-time six months after graduation with an average starting salary of just over $75,000 a year. We're ninth in the nation for career placement, um, and then we're 14th for return on investment, 15th for mid-career salaries, so our students start, you really hit the ground running right away, and then continue that momentum over time. If you decide to apply, here's just some basic information on the process. We do use the common application. We do not have any supplemental essays at Stevens, just that one personal statement for our school. We, of course, need your transcript, and we'll be looking at all of your classes, but very specifically also certain math and science classes, depending upon the area of interest you have. We require two letters of recommendation, one from a counselor, one from a teacher. And we have been test optional for the past two years, but we will make the announcement as to whether or not we're remaining test optional for fall 2023 this May. So be on the lookout for that. We are a school with early decision and regular decision. So early decision, remember, is that binding agreement. So you only apply early decision to one school. You're making a commitment to that place. Two deadlines of November 15th and January 15th that you can choose from. Of course, we have regular decision as well. Um, you can apply as many schools regular decision as you'd like. You're not making a commitment to any one particular place. And that deadline is January 15th. At Stevens, you're automatically considered for merit-based aid just by applying for admission. Your application for admission also serves as your merit-based scholarship application. But to be considered for need-based aid, you do have to complete the FAFSA, which is the government form, and the CSS profile, which is a form made available through College Board. And lastly, we do offer a pre-college program at Stevens. So these are one to two week residential experiences on our campus. They're um, academic modules. So you essentially complete a project during your time with us. The modules are based on different areas of study we offer. So a module on business or engineering, music and technology, perhaps, if that's your interest. You live on our campus, you eat in our dining halls, so you get a really good sense of our school, but also just more generally what it is that you're looking for in your college experience. Applications are currently live for this program. Here's some contact information. Also, feel free to put any questions in the chat. Thanks so much. Q and I, sorry. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And as you shared, yes, if you have any questions at all, feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Um, our representatives are here and available to answer your questions. The next representative is from Colgate University. Let me try to figure this out. Here we go. 
All right, so um, my name is Mari Prower. I'm the Associate Dean of Admission at Colgate University um, and going to try to give you a better snapshot of what we're all about in six minutes. Um, so Colgate's unique in the sense that we represent the best of a research university and a liberal arts college all in one, in the sense that we're predominantly undergraduate institution, um, but we're sort of on the larger scale of that of the smaller liberal arts colleges as well. And I'll talk about where that research comes in a little bit. We have about 3,200 3, undergraduate students and we only have about 12 graduate students. So we get to carry the really fancy title of university, but we really are just an undergraduate focused institution. We offer over 56 diverse majors, almost 200 clubs and organizations, and something that does differentiate us a little bit from other smaller liberal arts colleges is that we also have division one athletics. At the core of what we do is our academic experience. Teaching really is the priority for our faculty um, with all of them having, all of our faculty having uh, PhDs or their terminal degrees in their area. Um, all of the research is really going to our undergraduate students. So students will take uh, courses within what we call the core curriculum. And this sort of helps unite our student body in sort of this common academic experience. We like to break your academics out into thirds to help you conceptualize a little bit better. So the first third or so of your coursework is taken within the core and distribution requirements. The second third is taken within your academic major and the final third within uh, electives. And so that's how students are able to sort of customize their academic experience and make it as flexible as they want it to be. Um, to give you a sense of how flexible it can be, last year's class 30% did um, double major and 50% had at least two minors as well. So a lot of students are really uh, engaging in that level of um, academic experience. Um, your, your course are taught all by faculty um, and our students are really getting that hands-on research experience. Um, and so students about 90, sorry, 84% of our students will complete some form of academic research. Uh, we dedicate over $2.1 million every few years to, to funding uh, undergraduate research experiences. So a lot of students are graduating with Colgate having done one, two or three different uh, published research experiences as an undergraduate student, which sets them up really nicely for life after graduation. Um, we also, sorry, I'm skipping around a little bit. Um, we also uh, have recently been ranked number one in the US for the number of undergraduate students who go off campus for a full semester. Um, and uh, off campus study is something that's really, really important to us. Students really enjoy being on off campus, um, but also connecting with the Colgate community when, it, when they're off campus. Um, all of our students, uh, freshmen through junior, are, are required to live on campus. Um, so it tends to be about 92 to 94 percent of our students that do live in campus affiliated housing. And that's because of our physical location, which I will talk about in a second. Given that we are a really tight knit community, students are really passionate about more than their academics. So students are divided up into the residential commons and this is our residential system on campus. So just as the core unites our student body in an academic experience, the residential commons unites our, our student in sort of a residential experience, especially during your first two years on campus when you're really trying to find your footing. Students will also then get involved in their clubs and organizations. It's very common for multiple students to be in you know, five or six clubs um, and be the uh, head editor of the Maroon News newspaper and then also be part of Sushi Appreciation Club um, and also play uh, some form of intramural or club sport. Um, something that does differentiate us quite a bit from other liberal arts colleges is that we have Division One Athletics. We were in March Madness this year. Um, everybody's brackets were messed up this year in March Madness, but if you put us going forward, thank you for believing in us. Um, we did not go past the first round, but we played a very, very, very good game. And we were really proud um, to kind of be on that national stage. And the school spirit on campus is incredibly high and students attend uh, all different kinds of games um, all the time and, and really find that sense of community given our location there. Within six to 10 months of graduation um, in a pandemic year, so this is class of 2020, 94% were employed during graduate school. Last year, that number bu bumped up to 98%. Um, so again, we're really, we want your degree to carry value with you. So everything that you're doing on campus, we want it to feel like you're sort of having this experience that will translate into the outside world. Um, it is very common for students to have multiple different internships. Uh, we also offer um, upwards of a million dollars in summer funding. So if you have an unpaid or underpaid internship, you can apply for summer funding for up to five or $6,000 to fund that, let's say living in San Francisco, working for a startup company um, that isn't paying you anything, uh, we'll, we'll actually give you that money to be able to do that. Uh, we also fund that research, like I said. So Colgate students always say their favorite thing to do um, is to spend Colgate's money. And that's a good problem to have in that sense. Um, we also work with over 190 formal recruiting partners. So these are organizations that have said that they'll only take Colgate students for certain internships or job opportunities. They all come to campus or do virtual information sessions and interviews and reserve a certain number of spots just for Colgate students. 
We have about 35,000 living alumni across the world and uh, it's a small but mighty crowd and it's actually a, a, a larger crowd for, for sort of the size of our school. But a lot of our students really sort of uh, look to the alumni network. It's a very, very, very tight knit alumni network and they look to that alumni network as they're sort of, sort of tr starting to get their footing. We're located in the town of Hamilton, New York. We are a rural and residential campus. There is no way around saying that we are a rural, rural campus and we really embrace that. A lot of our faculty live in the town of Hamilton. It's a very, very friendly town. Um, there's wonderful farmer's markets on the weekends. Students, it's very common for you to see your professors at coffee in town at the farmer's market, um, getting a bagel with their family on the weekend. Um, and that's something that really sort of elevates the Colgate experience and makes you feel like you're in this really tight knit bubble. Um, because of our location, most students are staying on campus during the weekends. They're staying there um, all throughout their, the, the school year for the most part and really just spending their time being immersed in Hamilton. One thing I will point out and then I'll, I'll shut up is uh, that we have recently announced something called the Colgate Commitment. And this is our financial aid initiative to make Colgate affordable for anybody who wants to be at a place like Colgate. Basically for families with a, a, a total combined income of $80,000 or less, we'll not pay one dime towards tuition. And from $80,000 to $150,000, we still meet 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. Um, and up to $150,000, all of your financial aid will be covered by grants and not loans. So that's money that's given to you and not paid back. Pretty simple application deadlines, very similar to some others. We have early decision one and two, as well as regular decision. Um, like many other colleges, we are test optional through next year um, and we'll be making a decision going forward for that. If you have any questions, let me know. We appreciate it. The next representative is from Harvey Mudd College. All right, hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon on my end here on the West Coast. My name is Raisa Diamante and I'm about to share my screen. And I am the, um, I am the uh, Director of Enrollment Strategies at Harvey Mudd College. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen, a thumbs up would be great. Um, perfect, thank you. Um, and basically for folks who are not familiar with Harvey Mudd College, we are a liberal arts college uh, located in Claremont, California which is um, right outside of Los Angeles. And basically we are a suburban campus. Uh, I mentioned we're a liberal arts college, but we're a liberal arts college is focused specifically on math and science and engineering. Um, so this is actually our mission statement. And I start with this, this mission statement because it really means a lot to us. And this is the document or the statement that guides who we are. Through and through, we are a STEM school. That's what our students will graduate in. But we're kind of different STEM school uh, in that one, we're smaller. We're 900 students, strong, no, no graduate students, all undergraduate. Uh, and our STEM students actually do a minor in something in, in an area outside of STEM, so in the humanities, social science, and arts. And part of the reason why we do that is that we want our students to become leaders in their field and the kind of leaders who will actually understand how their work will one day impact society. For 1955, we thought this was a pretty um, uh, progressive thought about what STEM people should be doing and could be doing. And to this day, that's something we hold true. There's about 225 uh, incoming first year students. Over 70% of our students are domestic students of color. About 20% of our students are either Pell eligible or first generation to college students. So that's very important to us uh, to think about. And as you think about the people around you and what you're going to be doing, our academic program, as I mentioned, is important. So roughly speaking, our curriculum is divided into thirds, a third in your major. That makes sense. You want to major in something, right? And again, I mentioned to be in STEM, uh, a third in what's called our core curriculum, and then a third in the humanities, social science, and arts. That core curriculum that you're looking at, it's roughly speaking your first four semesters here. And regardless of what major you end up becoming at Harvey Mudd, you, everyone takes the same classes. So relating this to Brooklyn Tech, and with the majors that you have on your campus, imagine if everyone on campus took the same initial classes, so you all have the same um, initial way to, uh, to approach a problem, and as you go into your major, you might specialize a bit more in how you might address that problem, say world hunger, say climate change, big, big, big problems in the world, right? And that's the reason why we have a much more uh, broader focus as a liberal arts college focus on STEM. And these are the majors that we have on our campus. Of note that is that our engineering program uh, is offered as a general engineering program, and that's uh, accredited by ABET. Uh, so you can specialize in areas like civil and mechanical and uh, aerospace engineering, but the idea again is that you have a broader background and then you, you dive in. Um, 
part of the way that our students will dive into their areas of interest is through research. Uh, we All of our students do research. It's kind of easy to say that when you're 900 people strong, uh, but also it's also remarkable because the level of research that you'll find here would be comparable to what you might find at some research institutes. Uh, our, our hallmark program is called the clinic program. Our largest majors are computer science and engineering. So everyone in those two majors must participate in clinic. And what that is, is you put in a team of four to five people and you work on a project together. So we've done things like we prototype things for Alexa, for Amazon. Uh, we've done things like we prototype cleatless soccer shoes for Nike. That's not in the market because clearly it didn't quite work out. We're, the world is not ready for soccer shoes without cleats. Uh, but we do have things like for Mercedes-Benz, part of their heads up display system in their cars, that's partly done by our, our students at Harvey Mudd in Claremont, California. Um, so not bad. Um, it's again not uncommon for students to also be published if they're going to a traditional uh, research route. And again, I just want to make sure you folks really understand the importance of the humanities, social science, and arts in our campus. Again, as I mentioned, all of our students will do a minor or what we call a concentration in something not in math and science. And again, that's important because how can you be a leader in your field and how can you understand the impact of your work on society if all you if all you've ever known is just your major or just or just the sciences even? So that's important to us. And what helps our students get more rounded is the fact that we are literally across the street from four other li great liberal arts colleges. So some of you may have heard of Pomona College, Carmen McKenna, Pitzer and Scripps College. So basically imagine you're there at Brooklyn Tech and you can take classes at other schools right across the street from you. And that's exactly what happens on our campus. Uh, it's very seamless and our students really appreciate that. And aside from the courses, they also share um, opportunities to socialize. So you're never isolated as a group of 900 people. It's more like 6,000 undergraduate students living a square mile from one another. Uh, we have Division Three Varsity Sports, if that's important to you. And then 98% of our students live, off, um, live on campus. And uh, much like my colleagues at Colgate, a lot of our professors also live on campus. So you might run them to the Metro Trader Joe's, uh, you might run them to the at the coffee shop, or you might see them walking their dog in the morning, because that happens too on our campus. Um, but in terms of our culture and our student support, I really want to underscore the first two things that are listed in their community values. Our honor code is student written, student driven. Um, it means so much to our students. It means take home tests are the norm. It means our first semester, you're, you don't get grades. You're in a credit, not credit, credit, not credit system. Uh, and again, because we're allowing you to really acclimate to what our expectations are and what your own expectations are and whether they match up or don't match up. Uh, the ideal size for a study group on campus is N plus one, meaning any number plus one, meaning N, there's always room for one more. And there's some other social, um, there's other support systems that I, that I list down there. Uh, that you might find at most um, uh, most other colleges and institutions. Uh, this is uh, for folks who are not familiar with us. Um, our students are actually quite successful. So this is from the class of 2021. The students graduated last year. Uh, you may know you might notice that their median starting salary for that group is $117,000, and that's the second highest in the whole country. Um, so clearly we're small, but we're strong. Um, this is information about admission. You really don't have to sweat it at this point. Right now, you're just trying to get a feel for what a college is like and what, uh, where you want, how you want to be academically successful. Uh, do follow us on socials. We have an awesome Discord um, server. Um, people are very lively there. Uh, and of course, Instagram and TikTok too are places where you can find our students. I can't wait for you to meet, um, to meet them. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Before we hear from our very last representative, just a, another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to use the Q&A button. Some great questions are coming in. So um, we encourage you, if you have a specific question for any of our institutions here, to um, we encourage you to include the school name. Our last representative, but certainly not least, is from the University of Michigan. You are on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you everyone for taking the time to be here. My name is Jody Gore. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at the University of Michigan. If you're not familiar with the University of Michigan, we are located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor, one of the all-time great college towns in America, about 40 miles due west of the city of Detroit. 
the University of Michigan has an open campus. Uh, that means that we don't have any gates or fences or walls around our campus and our students are able to freely move from on campus to off campus and take advantage of all that Ann Arbor has to offer. Great restaurant scene, great arts and culture. We have lots of beautiful wide open green space, including an arboretum that backs right up to uh, the Huron River. Our, creates a lot of unique recreation opportunities for our students to take advantage of. If you haven't had a chance to come see us, please do. We are offering in-person tours uh, of campus right now. Uh, we would love uh, for you to come see us. Maybe give us a few weeks kind of past the spring break because uh, we're really busy, but we'll offer lots of opportunities to visit campus right through the summer. We have about 30,000 total undergraduate students at the University of Michigan. We are a large public research institution. Uh, we have 14 undergraduate schools and colleges that our students are studying in. And uh, we offer about 280 different undergraduate majors in those schools and colleges. I'm going to share our fall poster right now uh, that will have information about all of those undergraduate schools and colleges. The beauty of a large school is that there uh, will be a lot of academic opportunity here. But also at Michigan, uh, we don't have a core curriculum. We have general education requirements in each of those 14 schools and colleges. Uh, but you generally, you will usually meet them through distribution requirements. So you also get a lot of choice in how you make up your degree at the University of Michigan. We teach over a thousand classes every year here. So you get a lot of choices, a lot of opportunity to explore your individual interests here at the University of Michigan. One other thing uh, that's unique about the University of Michigan that will help us stand out is that we are the number one public research institution in America. Uh, we do more research here at Michigan than anywhere else, over $1.5 billion, that's billion with a B, in research expenditures uh, last year. And we do a great job of connecting our undergraduate students with the research that we have going on here. Uh, this year alone, we connected 1,300 uh, first-year students uh, to research that we have already going on here in a variety of di different disciplines. We do research in all 19 schools and colleges that make up the University of Michigan. Uh, so it's not just about research in the natural or physical sciences. We are doing research in business and politics, social science, uh, in the arts, lots of opportunities for you to get involved in research here at Michigan. We're certainly proud of our experience outside of the classroom at Michigan as well. Um, it's a rather exciting day. Um, it's a rather exciting time actually right now uh, at the University of Michigan. You may not be aware of this, but our hockey team is in the middle of sudden death overtime in the Frozen Four against the University of Denver right now. So it's been a really good year for us in athletics. Uh, both our men's and women's basketball teams made very deep run in the NCAA tournament. Our men made the Sweet 16 for the fifth year in a row. Our women uh, made it just to the edge, almost to the final four, falling just short in the Elite Eight. Uh, and of course, our football team had a great year making the college football playoff and winning the Big Ten. Uh, it's a great weekend uh, for our women's gymnastics team as well as they complete for their second uh, national championship in a row. They actually won the national championship last year. We're hoping they can repeat. But it's hard to underestimate the school spirit that our students have as a result of our 29 uh, varsity sports teams uh, here. We have a great tradition, though. Um, in the arts, uh, a great community for the arts. We have a great community for social justice and service as well as activism on our campus. So there are many, many things that our students get involved in that make this a wonderful place. Uh, at Michigan, we do accept both the common application and the coalition application. Uh, they will be available on August 1st next year. Uh, we do not have a binding admission opportunity, but we do participate in early action. Uh, we have a very firm early action deadline of November 1. If you apply early action, we do promise you a decision no later uh, than uh, the end of January. On the screen, you will see information about our virtual resources. Uh, we have a lot of great programs um, for you to check out. If you want our longer information session, you can certainly do that on our website. We have virtual tours of campus. We have a great blogosphere YouTube channel uh, for you to get information about our campus as well as um, opportunities to follow us on social media. 
uh, we would love um, for you to get more information about the University of Michigan virtually as well as take the opportunity to come and see us if uh, you have the opportunity to do that. We do offer uh, generous financial aid to both in-state and out-of-state students. Uh, we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile for maximum consideration and almost all of our need, or almost all of our aid at the University of Michigan is based on financial need. We don't offer a lot of merit scholarships here at Michigan, um, but if you do the FAFSA and profile, that will um, put you in line to receive um, maximum consideration for aid here. So thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. All great information from um, all these great institutions here. Um, and that just means we have more uh, time. So um, at this time, we're going to pivot into our Q&A portion of this session. I invite all our representatives at this time to um, please turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute yourselves for our first question here which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented it. Um, so one of the things that I would always like to say to any students that I work with is make the choice that's right for you. Um, and it can be such a simple answer, but you're going to be listening to so many people like us, your families, counselors, um, and really, really dig deep and think of what you want in an institution and um, what you expect um, and, and do your research with that because you know yourself best and you know where you're going to fit in best sometimes. My advice would be to really focus on yourself in the process. It's very easy to kind of look to see what other folks are doing and be comparing yourself to other people. I know I did it when I was uh, looking at colleges. This only comes from years of experience on the admission side, but really focus on yourself and also make choices about what you're doing inside and outside of the classroom that will make you happiest now, that will make you as fulfilled as you possibly can be now, because there really is no, you know, set steps you could take to get admitted to one particular college, right? It's not, it doesn't work like that. So you want to make sure that, again, you're making choices now that make you happy in the moment that are helping you explore your interests and your passions. And then you'll find that school that matches best you and those choices you've made um, later on down the road. I think going right off of what Megan just said too is like stay true to yourself throughout the entire process. Um, this is your process and your process only. Um, you need to find a place that's right for you and not your neighbor, not your friend, not your parents, not your guardian, not your teacher. This is your process and this is your time to really grow. And college is such a formative experience in your life. And if you aren't staying true to who you are, then you might be missing out on some of those things. So, you know, take a leap of faith and explore colleges. Um, I actually think that despite everything that happened during the pandemic, um, now colleges are much more equipped to have all of our virtual resources. And you actually have so many more resources than any of us did when we were applying to colleges and even five years ago. So utilize those resources and really um, explore beyond what you think you might be interested in. And I think just this is just a running theme about constantly like checking in with yourself because what, might be, um, what might be important to you like your junior year of um, high school might not be the same thing that's important to you come January of your senior year. So just constantly like, does that still really matter to me? Or is that even more important now than ever before? Um, so if that's my piece of advice for our students. Sorry, I didn't realize I was still sharing my screen. I apologize for that, uh, first of all. Um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of advice, um, you know, just enjoy the process. I think you're going to realize that as you, you move from your junior year to your senior year, that things are going to go very quickly. So the more you can stay um, on top of things, you can, um, you know, pay attention to deadlines in your calendar, the better off you'll be. But enjoy the process as much as as much as possible. And, you know, put your best foot forward as, as best you can and everything will work out. You'll find a home where you can be happy. So much great advice. Thank you. Um, it's always really helpful to hear directly from um, college uh, representatives and those who work with um, families and students to just offer advice and suggestions, especially to those who are currently going through that process now. So again, thank you for that. 
Our next question here is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, the one thing I always want to drive home is that opportunity. Um, we provide opportunity to students who want to get a, high, a degree within higher education. Um, and that naturally creates a, a mass amount of diversity on our campus uh, in every sense of the word. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. And, and I always love to bring up because I love being able to see the students on campus and, and hear every walk of life um, that I get to encounter, not only in this, but also in the students that we do employ on in our office as well. And um, so if you're looking for somewhere that, you know, provides that opportunity to students and you want to work with those type of students as well, um, you know, we're the place to be, I think. I think what I would want students to know about or remember about, about Stephen specifically is that it's a, an incredibly collaborative place. So that, you know, there is of, of course a certain amount of selectivity in the admissions process, but once students get to campus, that competition does not continue on. It's incredibly collaborative. The areas of study that they're focusing on require that level of, of collaboration, requires lots of different folks with lots of different ideas um, and thoughts and opinions to come together to, to figure out how to solve some really complex problems um, in this world. And unfortunately problems we keep seeing more and more of um, sort of year over year. So it's really collaborative and it's really innovative. And if that kind of excites you, you would be a good fit for our school. Um, I think one of the most unique things about Colgate is just sort of the intense nature of our residential experience and how uh, sort of that uh, liberal arts and research university really kind of transcend each other. And because of the tight knit nature of our residential life, a lot of those conversations continue outside of the classroom too. So very similar to what Megan said again is like, um, even though you might feel like it's going to be this really competitive nature on campus, it really is much more of a supportive network. And that's kind of where you get those two elements of that intensified liberal arts experience and living on campus and being able to carry those conversations to the dining hall and to your residence hall and to sports games and beyond. I'm going to try to be funny here, uh, but uh, the one thing I'd like to say is that Harvey Mudd is not the same as Harvard Med, because I think some folks will be like, oh yeah, Harvard Med, I've heard of you before, uh, but this is just to say that there's so many colleges out there that are, um, may seem familiar, like you feel like you know so much about them because or you may know nothing about them because it's not a name you've ever heard before. Kalamazoo College, where is that? What does that mean? And if they're in Michigan, Great Liberal Arts College. Just to know that there are many schools out there and for Harvey Mudd specifically, our mission statement means a lot to us and being part of the Claremont College Consortium as a STEM school, being uh, next door to five Great Liberal Arts Colleges means a lot to us as well. So. One thing that I love about Michigan is there's not one kind of student that does well here. Um, we're a large school um, with, with great academic programs across the board. Students who are passionate about engineering and business and the arts and having the opportunity to live in you know, residence halls with students from a different academic discipline as yourself and working with them, collaborating with them, um, working on project teams and research with them, I think helps make Michigan a, a pretty special place. You know, I know I just spent a lot of time talking about how fun our athletic teams are, but there are a lot of students here who could care less about our sports teams, and that's just fine. Um, they'll do well here. Uh, you'll do well here if you don't care about that. Um, we're a big school with big ideas and lots of passionate students and takes a lot to make this wonderful world a special place. And we think that's great about Michigan too. Um, it just proves that each institution is truly unique. Um, we do have a few more minutes. So we'll try to get to our last question here, um, which is what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? What is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? Um, I guess one thing that I, I know that I was always worried about when I was applying and, and I have many students that have worked with me over the years um, that have also felt this way is that you have to have these perfect grades, that everything has to be impeccable and you uh, can't make mistakes. Um, you know, it's also important to keep in mind it's what you do outside the classroom too. Um, you do want to build that resume, um, but you want to make sure you're focusing on things that you enjoy. Um, because when you enjoy something, uh, it shows 
um, in your transcripts, it shows in your resume, and it shows in potential interviews for any honors programs um, or really any of the other programs here on you know, especially with us on our campus, but even in general, um, it shows your passion and your commitment um, when you do commit to those things. Um, so definitely try to, you know, look at things uh, more in a introspective type of way and, and focus on what you are prioritized um, uh, or prioritize what it's important to you, I should say. And, uh, you know, don't, don't stress too much about it. Do, you know, be your best. And it, it will show. I think what I'll add is that, um, you know, one of the toughest uh, parts of the process is when we release decisions and we're able to offer admission to some students, we're not able to offer admission to other students, there might be students who are placed on the wait list. And then you have those conversations with students about, you know, what did I do wrong? What could I have done differently? And I really just want to tell you right now, there's nothing you did wrong. There's nothing you could have done differently. Again, it's just, um, again, a process that does not have a set way to go about it. There are many difficult decisions that have to be made. I think students would be surprised at how we're much more looking for reasons to admit a student than to not offer them admission to the school. Um, and so again, just know that, you know, it's it's not, you do the best that you can each and every day to put forward that best application possible. Because I think that that's what's most important at the end of the day. If you can send it off and know, I did everything I could and whatever happens it will be meant to be and I'll find the next best place for me. I think that's, you know, the best sort of outcome you can possibly hope for. Um, I think the piece of advice I would offer or or just suggest is that this is a very human process. We are humans. We also read your applications. Um, we are on the other side of our, the email inbox and on the other side of the phone, and we want to help you. We are all in higher education because we love what we do, not just for specific institutions, as many of us have worked at other institutions too. We just love, we have a passion for educating young adults. Um, and we want to help you throughout the process. So uh, just remember that as you're writing your essays and as you're trying to send these emails, like we're all humans behind here and, and we understand and we want to show compassion. Um, and this process should have compassion. Um, and we want to sort of prove that to you in the sense that like you can email us and we will respond and you can come to our campuses and we will say hi to you. I'm going to go like the opposite end. Um, not the no, not the compassion part. What I meant by that is the part where we're talking about financial aid and money. I think a lot of folks that one of the myths is that whatever the tuition is, um, that's going to be how much it's going to cost my family to afford that place. And again, that's not the case. There's a FAFSA, the CSS profile that many uh, private colleges use. There's need-based aid. There's merit-based aid. A place like Harvey Mudd offers both, and we actually cover all of your demonstrated needs. So there's the, yes, that first initial sticker shock, that is, that, that, that makes my heart skip a beat, uh, but not everyone pays that much, right? So just putting that out there. Um, I went to school quite a while ago, if I'm honest with you. Um, but, you know, my generation didn't have social media. We didn't have college confidential and we did just fine. So beware of what you see online, um, you know, what you hear third hand um, from folks, um, because it's, it's not always um, the best information. If you have questions for, you know, a college, reach out to us, talk to us, get, get our advice on these things in our process. Don't rely completely on social media and things secondhand. I think that, um, that's probably um, good advice as well. Great, thank you to all our representatives. Um, all great information again, and what a really um, awesome q and I think I've learned um, so much. And so again, we appreciate your time and thank you to each of you for joining us. Um, we have now reached the conclusion of this session. As we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, it would be super helpful for us. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Brooklyn Tech. Again, thank you all and have a great night.